Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about my first misdiagnosis. Um, and that was of psoriatic arthritis for my joint pain and rashes. Um, my fiance at the time and I had gone to urgent care um, because I did not have a primary care physician because I was 24. You don't really need one when you're 24 or so I thought. Um, and so I went to the urgent care doctor and he, um, took a look at my legs. He took a look at my joints and everything. And he said, yeah, it looks like psoriatic arthritis to me. Um, you need to get in touch with a primary care physician and then he will send you where you need to go. So I, um, he prescribed me loading, um, at 400 milligrams, uh, I think it was twice a day. And um, Lodine is basically a stronger ibuprofen. Um, and it really helped. I uh, got to the point where I was pretty much pain-free on it within a couple of days. And um, it, it seemed to be great. It seemed to be the magic cure. But um, I knew that it was a painkiller and not something that could actually cure me. And so I, at the time, um, my I come from very healthy stock. So um, typically our doctors growing up were chiropractors or all natural healers um, because no one had ever really been sick before and, or really been sick. And so that was kind of my entire education for how this process should go. And so the first thing I do is I jump on Google and look for all natural remedies. And so I bought a bunch of supplements, started taking them all. Um, within a week, the loading stopped helping and it would help a little bit, but it was almost like two after two hours after I took it, I started noticing a difference and it did nothing for my energy level, which was still in the toilet. And it was really, um, it was really just a band aid, And I knew that. And so, uh, the next thing I did was I wanted to know what everybody else with psoriatic arthritis was doing. So I jumped on a Facebook support group. If you guys know anything about Facebook support groups, they're for people who need support. And so you get some uh, really horrific stories on there of people just in deep distress. And I, that was kind of my introduction to psoriatic arthritis. And I was looking at photos, people taking pictures of their swollen joints and their skin. And um, my rash looked nothing like their rashes, but it was a rash. And that was not outside the ordinary for me just to assume that I was a weird case of X, Y, and Z. So I, um, I started watching these girls' stories and talking to them and hearing them um, cry out in absolute agony over their life right now. And I, that did not help my mood. I was so devastated that I had joined this new group of people that, um, as I thought of it then, had their lives ruined. And I, um, I was obsessive about it. I couldn't stop Googling it. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I couldn't stop talking about it. I couldn't stop, um, hearing these girls' stories and um, some men too. It was mostly women, which is the case for all autoimmune diseases. Um, but finally, I posted my own, uh, my own story of just how much pain I was in and how much, um, how hopeless I felt. And I'll never forget this one beautiful woman who um, was standing up straight in her picture. She wasn't all curled or anything. And she seemed to, um, have a job and, uh, was definitely not disabled. Uh, she just wrote me a message saying, how do you know you have psoriatic arthritis? 
And I was just like, well, you know, the urgent care doctor told me. And she's like, that's not how it works. You need to get a real doctor to refer you to a rheumatologist so that they can run some tests and confirm that you have this because you do not want to be thinking you have it when you don't. And that was very helpful for me. I did not take her advice, however, because I thought I knew better and I thought um, doctors just wanted to prescribe you whatever uh, they felt would make them the most money or make them look the best or whatever would get you out of their office fast enough, like the pain medication I was currently taking. And so I went to uh, I went the all-natural route again and signed myself up for a chiropractor. Well, during that time, I ran out of my uh, loading. I have to keep looking up at it because I <laughs> it's been so long since I took it. Um, so I had to take my loading. I had to refill it and I still did not have a primary care physician. And so I went back to the same urgent care, talked to a different doctor, told him my situation and he prescribed me three months of it. And he said that that would be plenty of time for me to find um, a doctor that would, you know, get me started on the process of a formal diagnosis. And so I tried to wean myself off of it probably every single week. And I could, I never could. I was in bed with such excruciating pain that I remember at one point, um, my fiance was just walking by the bed and my knee was right on the edge of the bed. And he just tapped my knee, like something that now someone could do to me and it wouldn't even register. And it was, I actually yelled because it was such excruciating pain for me. And my kneecap, um, you know, you have like a normal kneecap. Mine was blown up. Like I could barely get my jeans on. It was so big. And it wasn't any other part of my leg. It wasn't swelling. It was just the joint was so big. And um, so I, what was actually going on, which I didn't find out until years later, was um, there was so much fluid behind my kneecap that it was actually pushing uh, pushing my kneecap down into the ligaments there, and that was rubbing and creating irritation. And so it was just a vicious cycle of inflammation and rubbing, causing more inflammation and rubbing. And my knees were um, screwed, basically, uh, for lack of a better term. But um, so... During that time, I was doing everything I could, uh, so I thought, other than actually going the route I should have gone, which is getting a primary care physician, and so I went to a chiropractor, and um, I had gone to chiropractors most of my life, off and on. My parents would find a really good chiropractor that would help them with something, and so they'd send all their kids to them for a little while before they found a better one. And so that was a very common practice, too. If you have a problem, go to a chiropractor, and he'll either fix your spine, which will fix everything else, or um, he will give you supplements that will help fill in the gaps of what your diet is not um, giving you, and that will call cure all illnesses. And so um, I went to the chiropractor and she looked at me and she took some x-rays and she said, well, there's no um, significant damage yet. (laughs) And uh, she said, but what I'm looking at, I think is Lyme's disease, which if you guys are familiar with the all natural community, um, Lyme's disease is a common thing that people like to point the finger to. And so I went reading up on uh, all the Lyme's disease articles and everything that I could find. And I thought, yeah, this is what I have. And um, so during that time, it was like psoriatic arthritis seemed pretty ugly and um, incurable and also damaging to my joints. And that was something that I was terrified of because I wanted to be a mom someday. I wanted to be able to chase my kid around and not have to worry about um, my everything hurting as I did it. And uh, I um, was pretty petrified of that. And so I kind of jumped on the bandwagon of Lyme's disease And I will talk about that in another video because that was a whole thing. (laughs) So, um, yeah, that was kind of where I was uh, up until um, 
I would say September of 2015 during that time and um, completely hooked on loading. Um, absolutely had to take that every single day, multiple times a day in order to function. And um, yeah, so I can't wait to tell you more of my story. Uh, I hope you like and subscribe. And I also hope you comment so that I can talk to you more about this. And uh, let me know if you have ever been misdiagnosed or actually correctly diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis and your experience with that. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.